Hello, Changing the Future Tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger with me, Blue Anikilo. <laughs> so last episode, we saw what happens uh, if the future refuses to change. And we've clearly got our work cut out for ourselves if we're going to prevent that from happening. So anyway, the, uh, the other main thing we did, not counting that, was we learned everyone's... Um, Wrong uh, panel there. Uh, learned everyone's uh, magical affinity. So we picked up some new spells, and now we can continue learning new techs. Uh, so Chrono will learn Cleave eventually, which will be a physical attack. Now he's got a magic attack properly, although I don't know for sure if Wind Slash goes off your power or your magic stat. Probably power. I think there's a star by the spell if it's going to be magic. Uh, we've got Marl, who will eventually learn another cure spell. She is going to be our primary healer, although there's a few characters that learn some healing spells. Luca has got fire, and she'll learn a, a cool AoE circle type spell. N Napalm is pretty good, actually. Cure is pretty good as well, so th they've got some pretty good spells. Uh, Luca is our most magical character. She won't learn any healing stuff. Uh, she's also very slow. And then, um, I guess Robo himself never um, unlocked any new techs. Uh, from Specchio, but um, we are we have confirmed that he does shadow damage. So there's four elements, and we've got one of each right now. All right, so uh, let's continue, basically. I am happy with my current party. We're going to leave the robot here, because surely being stuck at the end of time would be less traumatic for a robot than one of the girls. So you may have noticed, <coughs> when we uh, arrived here, there was these uh, portals. I'm just going to call them portals. So that's where we came out of, that's the Proto-Dome. We could go back there if we wanted, but not much point. This is Medina Village. No idea where that is, but uh, we are from 1000 AD, that makes some sense. And this is the Mystic Mountains! Could go back to 65 million before... Uh... Can we though? I didn't think they'd let us. I was just testing it out. I want to go back to Medina Village, but... This was kind of an accident. Cool. We'll, uh, we'll come back here later. Don't worry about it. There's no need to go back 65 million years BC. We're just, uh, <laughs> testing out our time travel abilities. <laughs> I do know that I have a habit of, uh, because I've played this game so many times, it's kind of less exploration than me just going through the shortest path to finish the game. So, uh, I should every now and then try to maybe test out the waters and try a different route because... I would have just automatically clicked this normally. So anyway, we could go to 65 million BC. It's kind of a waste of time though, because you can't progress the plot. Anyway... 1000 BC... 1080? Um, there appears to be some goblins in this house. Well, I didn't expect uh, <laughs> a time portal to be in your, your closet, but uh, sure. <laughs> Humans, I tell ya! Well... I mean, I, I don't think anyone was expecting this. Village of Fiends? Hmm. An old human who lives near a cave in the mountains. Marl is super happy about it. Oh. You spend 400 years, you know, maybe we, the monsters and the humans can get along. Yeah, there you go. See, some some of the monsters are cool, just not all of them. Alright, so uh, welcome to Medina Village, and now that we've got a world map, you can actually see where we are. Uh, I believe there is a way... there might not be... I'm trying to remember what the button was. There we go. This was the one you would have had in Super Nintendo. Uh, so you could have still figured it out, but nowadays on the DS, you just get a fancy little uh, kind of piratey map looking thing on the right there. So, um, we should explore the village first, right? Go check out the Elder's house. He oh, wait, what's this f flashing star thing? You definitely don't want to miss those. Especially the speed ones. I, I suppose this is as good a time as any to go over a, a short little thing here. So, I would mentioned earlier that stats like your strength and stamina and also your magic, they will ca cap at 99 and then they will just display star star, because that's the highest they will go. Your speed only goes to, I believe, 16 is the star star level for that. 
So it will display 12, 13, 14, 15, and if you go up any higher than that, it will say 16, which is the max. I think. We'll have to test it out, but I know the scale is considerably lower than the, the rest of the stats. So, the speed capsule, or speed tab, if you're playing the Super Nintendo version, gives you plus one to your speed. And given that 16 is as high as it goes, it's proportionately a lot larger of a difference than uh, the power tabs or capsules or, or the magic ones. Um, now, who do you give it to? The speed ones are the most important, in my opinion. And like you can see here, Luca's speed of six is half of Chrono's, so he's going to get about two turns for every one she gets. You could give it to her to try to balance out her speed stat, but I'm just going to say, once I've got faster characters, I'm probably not going to use Luca that much, because I could just get Chrono closer to 16, because he's always in the party, and then find other characters that are also quick, and then everything would be much speedier. On the other hand, Marl is going to be the primary healer for a fair while, uh, and I generally like Marl a little bit more than Luca. I find her a little bit more... Um, sustainable her her speeds well it's a little bit higher on base but um well luca gets some cool armor and stuff that changes that but uh, you can also see robo's pretty slow really really later on he'll get a, a passive upgrade to his speed stat but that's a long way off and that's okay that's with plus two speed from the belt already he'd be at six by default so yeah i uh i think i was i was wondering how i wanted to deal with it earlier on about all these tabs who i should use them on and uh, I think I've kind of decided just to go with Chrono, because, you know, he's always going to be on the team, so having him go quicker. Uh, magic? Now, you might not think Chrono is the most important magic user right now. He's only got the one tech that even uses magic with uh, lightning. But eventually, his magic stat is very, very important, and I believe it applies to a lot of dual techs. So um, having him have more magic will make a lot of dual techs do more damage. And his magic stat tends to lag behind. So, there you go. Uh, you know, it's the main character. It's easy to just give him all the stats. Anyway, let's uh, continue looking around the town. Blast that, Ozzy the Eighth. Hmm. Ozzy the Eighth, huh? I think this guy is just, like, cleaning the wall or something. It's, it's brutal. <laughs> great, 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 great grandfather fought against humans beside the fume floor. So, uh, I guess we need to learn a little bit more about this Fiend Lord. Now, there was someone at the cathedral that was talking about the Fiend Lord. If you guys remember back a few episodes. Okay, so this is a good, this is a really good tip, actually. Only magic can harm it. Magic, humans aren't actually supposed to have magic, only fiends are at this point in time. So, ma humans would never be allowed to go through the cave. Kind of an interesting little tidbit that, uh, technically speaking, humans would be massacred in there. Anyway, we have magic thanks to Specchio, so we're okay. So we've seen some of these guys before. <laughs> Not very nice. Ekron Cave, that might be the name of the monster even. No room for humans. Come on, buddy, please. What? What? These monsters aren't very nice at all. That guy's got actually pretty good physical defense, I guess, but... Uh, dead is dead. Chrono, when you're just doing, like, quick auto-battling and you're not using MP, which early game is a lot of the fights, Chrono is so much better at fighting than uh, the girls, unfortunately. There we go, we got the Antipode now, which is actually really, really good. You saw that against Lavos before. <clears throat> Antipode is one of the reasons if you wanna, like, like I was saying, like, I'm not a huge fan of, of Luca late game. Like, I love the two characters, they're just battle-wise not my favorite. But Antipode is a really, really good spell. Like, uh, they get some really good text, don't get me wrong, and we'll show them off. But, uh... I just like the speedy characters. So anyway, now that we beat him up, he'll let us rest for the night. It's pretty expensive though, considering most in most inns are like 10 gil. 10 Gs. Also, what's this guy doing here? 
no stinking humans are gonna talk to me. He actually, like, oh no, I'm still talking to him. He just, he's not listening. Come on. Wow, even this guy wants to fight. All right, let's see what they can do. Um, well, the jailer, I think we fought um, back when we were arrested in, in prison. But I just, I love this spell so much, I gotta show it off more often. I realize nowadays, in 2017... Oh, it doesn't even work. That's a disappointment. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a shame. Uh, we've got, like, all kinds of cool Skyrims and uh, Mass Effects that look all pretty, but uh, at the time when Chrono Trigger came out, some of the animations for the spells were really top of the line. Even Chrono's Lightning, I feel, it's got a really nice sort of... I don't know, I just like the animation, the, the timings with the sound effect and stuff, it feels really nice. I realize some of this is nostalgia goggles, but uh... Now, if for some reason you're stupidly rich, they actually sell some really good stuff here. The Zanmato? Pretty awesome sword! Doubles his attack nearly, and also 50% more damage to magical enemies. It's uh, getting close to endgame weapon. But uh, that's pretty expensive. And then even a normal bl blade, like the bronze blade, is way more expensive than it should be. So the only one here even worth considering is the Zan Mato. But you'd have to grind for a very long time to afford that. Radiant Helm, also really quite good. And uh, Luminous Robe, pretty reasonable. Radiant Plate, pretty awesome. Some good stuff, really, but uh, none of this is worth really buying at this point in the game, so... <laughs> what a jerk. Don't worry, we'll find ways of getting all that cool loot later on. I suppose we should check out this glowing square. Um, I don't know, Marl. Hmm, is that the Fiend Lord again? It's the second statue of him we found. We have to fight all these guys? Magus! Sounds like he might know some magic. If Lavos can be reawakened, there will be no more humans. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure... <coughs> I'm sure Lavos destroys the planet, so the monsters aren't going to have a great deal out of that either. Hmm, Magus gave his life for almighty Lavos? Well, that's not very good. Okay. So, kind of sounds like this Fiend Lord La or Magus might be behind Lavos. Alright, well, I mean, uh, we've got a bit of a cue, clue. Just gonna head up this path first. Might want to check out these ruins. mid ethers are pretty good. Unfortunately, there's a mysterious pyramid blocking this uh, platform. Sadly, we cannot enter right now. And don't forget about that one. That has some of the best stuff in the game on it. So just remember that for like, you know, 30 or 40 episodes from now. Make sure you go back. All right, Melchior. Wait a second. Isn't this the guy that was, uh... At the Millennial Fair? How did he get over here? You're the, the swordsmith? You betcha, I'd love to buy one. Now, if for some reason, uh, you never bought that silver blade, I mean, this is your chance to upgrade. <laughs> but yeah, we do want to buy most of this stuff. Crimson Blade, especially against enemies that can only be damaged by magic, you have to bring Chrono, so letting him do a little bit more damage with magic seems like a good idea. We already got the uh, bandit's bow in the, uh, the, the apocalyptic world. Might as well pick up the uh, plasma gun. This would have been pretty good if we had this in the last area, but I don't think we're going to be fighting a lot of robots for any time soon, but I might as well buy it. No helmets. Could buy some titanium vests. I will buy one. I'm not gonna buy one for Luca right now. Um, I mean, I, I can afford it, I guess, but um, 
Wow, spoiler alert, she's gonna get something better before too much longer. Well, I had a few things I could sell in the back here. Wait a second, did I have unequipped things that I... I may have just wasted a little bit of money, my bad. Alright, so I've equipped all of that, got some iron suits to sell. I could reassign the speed belt now. Which I think I will do. Um, we'll just throw uh, the headband over there for now. Um, basically, at least this keeps Marl and Luca at the same speed rating. So their antipode bomb, or whatever we called it, the, their, their dual tech, they can both kind of chain it together in a row at the, without having to wait for one or the other. So it's kind of more efficient that way. Alright, so we don't need their old gun. I think I bought a plat- I must have forgot to equip that. You know, I probably- We probably found one of these- I- I wasn't paying attention, my bad. We found one of these in the last dungeon, but Luca wasn't in the party, so I couldn't equip it. That's my bad. And I must have picked up the Thunderblade as well and not equipped it. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Or did I just find a second- Okay, I just had- I found an extra one. It's fine, no big deal. We found two somewhere. I don't think I ever bought those ones. Yeah. Alright. Sorry, Blue Ink, a little, just a little bit confused for some reason, you know. Anyway, I've got a bit more money again. I could buy more stuff, but I think we're fine. Uh... Well... No, you can't buy ethers yet. If you could buy ethers, this would be a great time to buy some ethers. Just knowing what the next dungeon is like. Really, Melchior? He's got a little bit of uh, that sort of philosophical bent on him. And uh, he really likes his swords. Guess, uh, can't really do much down here, but, uh, I don't know how he got back here, honestly. Um, this cave, I mean, you should stop humans. Anyway, let's go to the Hecarim cave and get going. I want to go home, talk to my mom. We've been away way too long. These guys are still harping about that, huh? So anyway, we learned that, um, magic seemed to work pretty well on them. Let's just throw a little bit of, uh, ice. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, uh, you, know, you don't have a lot of MP, so it's hard to sustain these, um, you know, MP-centric type battles. If I remember correctly, you get pretty good tech points down here. I think, anyway. And there might be a place to, uh, restore our MP at some point. Maybe. Alright. Now, I have, like, memories of needing to rush down this gin bottle thing. I just want to see if this kills it one shot or not. Yeah, okay, good. I, uh... Let's test out a physical attack here. I have a feeling physical is not going to really do anything, though. Critical. I mean, we can probably save a little bit of MP just wiping up the last couple enemies here. I I don't know for sure, but I remember the bottle type enemies there that we saw earlier. Um, the, the first one I killed here. Um, I sort of remember them like draining MP or something from me, and not liking that very much. So. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe we should let one of them show it off just for the just for the YouTubes. It's actually been quite a long time since I played Chrono Trigger, so I'm a little bit rusty on uh, some of the encounters around here. Oh wait, I see a, a good combo here. Oh, they were lined up for a second, but I was too slow. Flamethrower did not do enough damage. Okay, yeah, those are the ones with the real serious physical defense. That's cool. Alright, no big deal. Mm, let's explore this floor first. Alright, so we got lots of these things. Now, if they would group up, 
I'm pretty sure Fire Will would work. I'm just trying to get like two for one, but uh, I'd be asking too much up here. Okay, that, I'll take it. Hmm. Not really enough damage. Oh well. Now this would be, actually, to be honest, um, this kind of battle would be really nice to have, um, what's his name, Robo on the team. Because Robo is the only one that has a full screen AoE right now. Uh, he can use his laser spin or whatever they call it. And it would do magic damage to everything on the screen. So he would probably make this dungeon a little bit easier. On the downside, um... He's... There's a reason why I don't like to bring him here for... Uh, well, he runs out of MP very quickly, I think. He doesn't have a big pool. So, what else is there in here? Isn't there a way in the water? I mean, there's gotta be a way in the water eventually. Let's head down this direction first. You guys group up for me, come on. No. Alright, good enough. Although these guys, it's possible these are the kind that you can actually do physical attacks to, we'll see. Oh, they're, they're nothing to worry about. Oh yeah. Now that was a crit, so you probably do like 25 damage normally. All right, we should probably keep Chrono healed up. Good reason to boost Marl's magic would you get would be to get more healing out of her spells. Oh, good bats, still hate them. Yeah, cheap enough. Flamethrower is really good for this kind of stuff. Except when it doesn't do enough damage. Oh. Well, so much for physical. Alright. Oh, I was hoping I could get all three on the line. Oh, it should be fine. I don't like this dungeon very much because, um, as much as I like the looks of the cool spell effects, having to use them on every battle kind of slows everything down. <laughs> Magic Scarf. Okay, that's um, actually maybe useful here. So, the counter rate is pretty cool, except that physical counters, or physical damage right now, which is all you get from counter, doesn't really do us any good. So I could just give someone plus two magic defense, or magic attack. I guess the accuracy is not very valuable either, to be honest. You know what? I will let us see the enemy's HP, and we'll let Marl focus on magic damage for now. But yeah, we'll, we'll switch that out when we get to a normal dungeon. For now, a little bit more magic. Good enough. Kind of odd with no background music in this place. These guys. These chumps. Well, three is pretty good. Hopefully it's enough to kill all three. Oh yeah, they're dead. Excellent. Excellent! It's not quite laser spin tier, but it's not bad. We got it figured out down here. Nothing to worry about. Except for the bats. Revenge of the bats, everybody. Just want to see if Luca can, uh... Maybe cheese, uh... Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Except it doesn't kill them. 
You know what? I'm just gonna save my MP. Hopefully they stay lined up. Because Flamethrower only costs one MP. Um, I'd rather just use that. Yeah. And that should kill them all. Well, that's about as cheap for MP as you can kill three bats, I think, is possible. Good stuff. I suppose Wind Slash from Chrono would probably work in here too, actually. I forgot about that. And it's, well, it's 2 MP, but still, it's an AO area of effect rather than lightning. Just hits a single target. Oh, look! This is the one I always forget, in case you're wondering. Someone will have to remind me about this one or I'll never come back for it. Ah, see, look at that. I mean, it only stole four, but that's two castings of ice. Tricks. Come on, let Luca get a turn. Alright, well... Hope, hoping ice can take out the uh, terrible bottle. I think the status effect on Chrono right now... Okay, that was HP, not MP. That would have been like, too much. <laughs> the status effect on Chrono is blind, I believe. So his 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 accuracy is way down. Um, let's try a normal flick through here, maybe. Okay. Not that uh, your physical accuracy makes any difference. Also, I don't think magic can miss or anything, so... That status debuff doesn't even matter for, um, for, for this dungeon where you have to cast magic, basically. Alright, look at this. Now we're in the water. Easy peasy. Look at these three-dimensional areas. So, maybe good opportunity to heal up. This time we got lots of shelters. Look at that. We barely even used half of our MP. I could have gone way more overboard in there. Uh, I would like to save it, though. Now, I feel like... This might have been one of those dungeons where if you were able to steal from enemies, there was something worth stealing. Let me just zip down to the enemies we were fighting here quick. Gin bottle. You can charm, or steal, a shield sphere from it. I don't think that's that valuable. Maybe that's all there was. Maybe it's the boss or something. I know there are some enemies that are worth trying to steal from, and I just... I don't have them all memorized. Uh-oh. Good thing we saved it. Everyone say hello to Hecarim. Now, if you paid close attention last battle, you might have a slight idea what he's gonna do. But I mean, assuming you've been listening to the, uh, the fiends back in the last town, you should have a pretty good idea how to handle this guy. And that did not do enough damage to be that threatening, I don't think. It should do less, wa the water spell should do less damage to Marl than Luca. She's kind of got natural water resistance. That's the one that hurts. It's not that bad. So basically, if you just focused on the antipode bomb, uh, I think he'll die in just a couple rounds, honestly. Oh, he's gonna do that? Sure. So, in case you haven't been paying attention at this point in the game, a lot of bosses in Chrono Trigger love to have a counterattack form, where they get free counterattacks if you try to damage them and you can't really hurt them. It's gonna be a recurring mechanic, so if you hadn't learned it by now, you're gonna suffer quite a lot. I suppose we should keep at it. I find this guy is considerably easier if you bring Marl and Luca than bringing Robo instead of one of the other. Um, because Robo doesn't have any dual tech high target single target magic damage right now. Antipode Bomb is the best you can get for that for a fair while. And uh, although Robo might make the dungeon a little bit easier, this combo, this dual tech, makes the boss so much simpler. He's got a fair bit of HP, clearly. 
maybe you should have healed up. I don't know. Alright, good. Perfect timing. Just do an aura whirl every time he goes into his counter form. No big deal. I think he'll probably die in one more, honestly. I bet you. There we go. Look at all those tech points. Bet you we're getting pretty close to a new tech, honestly. I know I, I, when I was younger, I used to grind this dungeon a couple times to get some new techs. Uh, what? How would you know that? You can't trust this guy. He's probably just making stuff up. Hmm. So fortunate that we can travel back to the Middle Ages. Well, we certainly didn't do very well at, like, fighting Lavos in person. Maybe we can prevent him from ever being summoned, or whatever. Alright. Sounds like we got a plan, everybody. Whee! So, you guys remember way back on episode one? They talked about a whirlpool that showed up out here sometimes? Hey look, it's a whirlpool, everybody! Let's go head home, have a little nap, and we'll call it an episode. Oops, we don't have to go to the inn. We can go to Chrono's house. Say everybody say hello to Mom. Yeah, I know, it was kind of crazy. Sorry, Mom. Got some friends. I'm pretty sure you can introduce your friends. Well, we've been busy saving the world, Mom. She's researching robots. Have we, sh have we showed Mom Marl yet? I think we might have done that the first time we uh, had her. All right, let's take a nap. We're home. It's been a bit of a hectic adventure here, being trying to be killed by the king and the chancellor. And Getting stuck in the future and chased around by robots and hearing about this Lavos thing that's destroying the world. Definitely need a break. Alright folks, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next episode for more Chrono Trigger.